Today, we're adding the inventory status to your product page. This is a feature that's already built into the Shopify themes that I don't think many people know about. But if you're one of the few that already does, then you're already ahead of the curve. It's a great way for your customers to know when you're low on stock, which can create a sense of urgency and scarcity for your products. So we're going to look at how to add this inventory status to our page and how it adjusts based on your inventory count. We'll take a look at the available settings, and then we're going to add a couple customizations that I hope you're going to like. But before we start, thank you for watching these videos. Many of our videos come from your ideas. So if you want to see your own customization in the next video, subscribe and prompt us in the comments below. All right, let's add the inventory status to our product page. So this customization will work in any of the free Shopify themes. Today we're using Dawn version 13. Uh, and before you start, just make sure you duplicate the theme. So in case anything goes wrong, you can always revert back to the old version. The first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to customize and go into the theme editor and head over to the products page. Let's change our default product. Okay, so when we're on the product page, we're gonna see here we have this product information section. And then within that section, there's a number of different subsections, which are called blocks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a block and you can see right here already built in inventory status. When you pull that up, you're gonna see here 501 in stock. So I'm just gonna rearrange this so it's right underneath the quantity selector. And when we click in here, we can see there's a few different options. So you can change the font, right? So it just changes how that text looks. Um, we can change the low inventory threshold. So this will, uh, so I'm gonna set this to 50. So if the inventory is less than 50, it'll show low stock. Um, if it's above it, it'll just show in stock like this. And you also have a setting to set the inventory count. So we can, if we take that out, it'll just say in stock. Um, or if we keep that in, it'll tell you exactly how many are in stock. So let's just save for now. And we're going to head over to the live store and we're just going to refresh. Okay, so now we can see that we've got our inventory status on the page. And if we go to a different variant, you can see here that the actual stock levels will be different per variant and that updates uh, accordingly. The stock levels are something that's set in the back end of Shopify. We're not going to get into the details of how to set all of the inventory levels. And in fact, Shopify has released some new features on how to manage inventory over the past year. So if you want to see a video on that, just let me know in the comments below. Okay, so this is what it looks like if there's inventory, it's in stock, it's above the threshold. If we go to a different variant, here we have a variant where it's below the 50 threshold. And you can see here, it now shows low stock with this orange icon, 41 left. Um, and if we go to different variants, that number will change. And if we go to this white one here, out of stock. So regardless of um, which out of stock item, it'll just still, still say out of stock. And so by default, this is what it's going to look like. Um, you do have another way it might show up. So just quickly, if we come to our product page on the back end um, and we can select all of our variants, bulk edit. And let's say we choose one of these white ones that are out of stock. And there's this option to continue selling when out of stock. So let's, uh, let's say, let's change this 3XL one to continue selling. Then if we refresh, you can see here 3XL now becomes available and it'll just show in stock, right? So this is regardless of what the actual inventory levels are, right? So the inventory levels are right over here. Even though it shows zero, it will still show in stock because we've set it to uh, continue to sell when out of stock. All right, so this is the default functionality of the inventory status. Now, the first customization we can look at is what if we wanna change the text here? Right, so it shows in stock. Um, if we choose another variant, it'll show 93 in stock. If we have, um, if we show the inventory count, um, we have uh, the low stock text and we have out of stock text, right? So what if we wanna change what it says? So what we can do is we can come back to our online store area 
themes. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to edit default theme content. We're going to go to the products area. And you can see here, we've got these different uh, parameters, inventory in stock, inventory in stock show count, and so on. And these are all the different ways it's going to show up on our store. So um, for example, inventory in stock show count. That is what we are seeing right here. Inventory in stock and show count. So let's say we want to change the quantity in stock to quantity available. And we want to change low stock to uh, order soon. Now, if we save and refresh our page, it'll show 501 available and order soon, 45 left. So this is how you can customize the, the messaging of your inventory status in any way you want. Okay, so let's just change that back to default. And now we're gonna add some of our own custom features. So this is the fun part. Um, it's gonna require a little bit of code, but don't worry, I'm gonna give you everything you need. So let's come back to our theme editor um, and we're going to edit code. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the snippets section right here and we're going to add a new snippet. And we're going to call this inventory status custom, okay? And then we're going to copy and paste the code into this file and hit save. Next, we're going to go to the main product.liquid file. And we've got two edits to do here. The first one is we're going to look for the word inventory. And it's going to take us to this when inventory. So you're going to see a bunch of code here until the next when, which is description. So let's just create a little bit of space here and here. And we're going to either delete this section or comment it out. So I'm going to just comment it out for now because uh, you may want to revert back if uh, something goes wrong or you decide that you just don't like this customization. Okay, so we've commented that out and now we're going to copy and paste this rendering of the file that we just created. Okay, and then next we're going to, again, look for inventory. Um, we're gonna come down here and we find this section uh, maybe halfway down in this file uh, around line 764 if you're in Dawn version 13. Uh, but it's gonna be in this schema section here where you can kind of see here where it's uh, all these settings. So it's under schema. All right, so inventory here. And we're gonna see here that these are the settings that we saw earlier in our theme editor, right? So show inventory count, low inventory threshold, text style. So we've got show inventory quantity, inventory threshold, text style right there. And we're going to come after this last one right here, show inventory quantity. And the, after this curly bracket, we're gonna create a little bit of extra space and we're going to copy and paste all of our settings right here. And so we can just format this a little bit, but we'll do that afterwards. For now, we're just gonna save. Okay, so we're getting an error. Um, it's probably due to a comma. So you can see here that this previous section with a curly bracket um, normally has this comma here. Uh, so we're gonna need to add that comma and we need that comma between any of these curly brackets. Only the very last one for this square bracket is the one that doesn't need it. Okay, so we're gonna try that again. Okay, so now it's saved and we can go back to our theme editor and when we refresh, we should see some new settings showing up. All right, so we've got some new settings. This first pair of settings is for the stock status. So we've got hide stock status and an ability to choose the stock icon. So let's show what that could look like. So if I click this, you're gonna see here that the status disappears. So why don't I save and give you a quick demo on why we might want that. Okay, so we've refreshed. And we can see here, low stock, 45 left. But if it's in stock, it doesn't show it. Um, and this way, you're only adding that extra messaging if you want to tell the customer, hey, there's low stock, you should order soon. Right? So that only shows up there. 
Um, currently, it'll also show if it's out of stock. So with the way these settings are set, you can pick and choose whether you want the low st stock, in stock, or out of stock to show or hide. So in this case, maybe we want to also hide out of stock. And if we save and refresh, right? so it won't show there. And it'll only show up if you want to show the customer, hey, these are low in stock, order soon, right? creating that urgency and scarcity for those products. OK, so the next set of features that we have added in here is the ability to change the icon of your uh, your status. So let's bring these back. And right now it's these circles. Um, but you know, let's say you want to do a different image. Uh, we've got these check marks here, so let's add that in. So you put that check mark in there, now you can show a check mark instead, showing that uh, we've got 500 in stock or 500 available. Um, same thing with the out of stock. You know, we can say pick this X here. So if we save and go back to our store, we can see here check mark for in stock. We've got our X for out of stock. Okay, and now the last feature that we've added in here is to show the back in stock date for any products or variants that are out of stock. So let's toggle this on. And we've got a couple different settings here. The first one is the message you want to show if you do have a back in stock date. And the second one is the uh, date format. Now, before this actually works, we actually have to set the back in stock date, which we haven't done yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, let's just save first so that we still have that in place. And I can just show you quickly if we refresh, nothing happens, right? It's still out of stock. So let's come back to our theme editor and let's go to our settings, custom data, variants, and then add definition. And we're going to call this back in stock date. And the namespace and key is going to be automatically generated. Make sure it's exactly as it's shown here because the code is looking for this exact uh, namespace and key. And then we're going to set this as type date. OK, and then we're going to save. And now if we go back to our product and look for the t-shirt, and then we can edit our variants. So um, there's a couple ways of doing this. One is just selecting the individual variant and updating it on its own. So if we come down to the bottom, you've got that meta field available back in stock date. So let's say change that to a week from now. The other way we can do this is we actually can access our meta field in bulk. So we can select our variants, bulk edit, and then we can open up our columns and show the back in stock date. So we can check that if it's not checked. And then we come to the very right, we're going to see that column become available back in stock date. And we actually have that one that we've set there. So we've set this one to a week from now. Let's actually set one from the past. So let's say you uh, set the back in stock date to sometime in the future. That date has passed, and you don't remember exactly that you have put that date in there, and your, and let's say your uh, your order has been delayed. So we don't want to have on our store that you know it's back in stock some day in the past, but it's still out of stock. So we've uh, we've mitigated that. So let's I'll just demo that for you by selecting a date in the past. Okay, so let's save, and then what we're going to do is we're going to refresh. OK, so let's go back to our um, extra small. Expected back in stock on uh, February 26th. And if we go to the small, where it's uh, back in stock on the 12th, well, the 12th is in the past. So it just doesn't show that day. It'll just show out of stock instead. All right, so if we come back to our settings, we can actually change a couple of things. right? So let's say you don't like that date format. You've got a few different options. We can, uh, let's say, use this one. 
And if you want to use a different phrase, uh, let's say you don't like expected back in stock on, you can be, uh, you can just say, let's make this shorter, back on back in stock on this date. So we can save that and we can refresh. And if we come back to our extra small, back in stock on February 26th, 2024. So there we have it. We've added the inventory status and we've also customized it to give you a few extra features. If anything wasn't clear, just let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, it would mean a lot to us if you could hit that subscribe button. It does go a long way to help us grow this channel and keep making videos like this. That's all for today and I'll see you in the next one.